All right, Brianna, election day is right around the corner, and it's time for some official predicting going on. Because now that we're professional pundits, you're rolling your eyes and shaking your head at me. I am. I, according to Nate Silver's 538 maps, Republicans are set to take back the House, but still a dead heat for who takes the Senate. Although this is very interesting. Uh, this, so this is the Nate Silver, look at that one on the left there. That's the Nate Silver 538 um, Senate prediction. That's the most favorable it's looked for Republicans. I, I think he gave, uh, previously they gave Democrats just a slightly more likely to hold the Senate. Now that's flipped the other way. This is all like everything is breaking wrong for the Democrats. So mm -hmm. I did. I revised my own predictions um, for in the last like a week ago, right before right before the Oz Fetterman debate. Mm -hmm. um, I said I thought we were probably just looking at another 50 50 Senate because I think Nevada will flip mm -hmm. for the Republicans. Um, th their candidate there, Laxalt, is is more is more normal Republican <laughs> compared to some of the so others. So you're basically staking the claim that all of the MAGA Republicans, as Trump would call it, or bad choice, bad yeah. candidate choice is going to hurt the Republican Party. But every time yeah. they've stuck with someone relatively normal, let's say like in George, the Georgia yeah. incumbent, governor it's of the incumbent, not even close. it's going to stay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just said the governor's race in the Senate yeah. race. But good candidate choice. Right. So that's why Arizona, I mean, you have to deal with the fact that the Republican candidate, Blake Masters, is, uh, he could still win. I'm predicting that he's not going to win. But in, the, in the governor's side, I mean, it's, it's odd. In the governor's side, Carrie Lake, who actually is a MAGA Republican, mm -hmm. um, uh, She's winning her race, probably. Mm -hmm. She's she's much further ahead than he is. So what that might be the that? opponent in that case. I think Mark Kelly, who is Blake Masters' opponent, um, I don't know. He's an astronaut. Maybe people think that's cool. <laughs> I don't. Honestly, I don't know. It's, but uh, but that one's a lot closer than the gubernatorial race. So I, I had just uh, finishing what I was saying. I, I had predicted. Um, uh, uh, Fetterman to win. Mm -hmm. I can no longer make that prediction <laughs> after watching that Interesting. debate. Interesting. I've changed my mind. I think Oz will win that race. So I don't think that the debate hurt him as much as people assumed it would for several reasons. One, there was that hot the mag moment with Chuck Schumer where he was caught saying exactly that. So I presume that he has kind of the best polls that there are, and I think that that's true. Before the debate, we talked about the fact that debates tend not to have a particularly significant effect on outcomes. Moreover, I got to say, I mentioned uh, earlier that I was watching a Phillies game, and so all the commercials for both candidates come across the transom. And seeing Fetterman in the ads, for which they can obviously cut and edit and have him presenting as its best self, it was a bit of a palate cleanser. It was nice hmm. to see him looking healthy and doing well and being the guy that everyone liked and knew, the kind of working class candidate in his sweatshirt. And I think that a lot of people are going to have that enduring image of him, even if they did see the debate or hear bad things about the debate. So that, I'm, not, I'm not making any big claims. Look, I learned about predictions uh, from the mistakes of the pod save boys back when they had keeping it 1600 and were gloating for weeks about how Hillary Clinton was going to win in 2016. <laughs> I don't want to say anything strong, but I think I'm a little bit more um, optimist, optimistic for Democrats in Pennsylvania hmm. than you might be. I mean, I w my predictions were, were slightly more optimistic for Democrats than a lot of people on the right. I mean, I, a lot of people who are not just necessarily rah rah Trump, but you know, are somewhat independent in their thinking, um, you know, are saying that they, right, they think Arizona might flip to um, Georgia, and you, you know you're going to have a, right, a 53. They think um, uh, New Hampshire, the New Hampshire race might flip, mm -hmm. and that, then that, then we'd be at like I think like 54. Um, that's that's getting a little that's too optimistic uh, for my taste. But yeah, I think I th I think I, I like Oz better at the race. And then given that's happening, the Georgia race does seem likely to me to go to a runoff. Mm -hmm. the, liber our, the libertarian candidate is staying in that race, mm -hmm. is, is getting some out of the vote. So he only has to keep the candidates beneath 50 percent, um, Warnock and Walker. Seems to me like that is, is a, the most likely thing to happen. And then what? Then if there's a runoff, so here's where I, I'm not sure. So I changed that on my map. Oh, you guys can put my map on screen if you, if you, uh, if you have it. Um, we'll throw that up there. Um, I, I turned like I changed Georgia to uh, to to gray because I'm not sure. Mm. Um, and uh, why doesn't oh, no, that's my old, that's my last that's before I updated it. Okay. That's my last one. Um, so you have it gray so now, I, not yeah, blue. Yeah, I, I, right. I changed Georgia to gray because the to re reflect the runoff. So if, if Republicans have already won, they already have they have 51 because they have a Nevada flip and they've held Pennsylvania. Then it doesn't matter if Warnock holds on. And I wonder if that will make Dems very like disillusioned and care less about coming to the polls, and then and then and then um, 
Walker would run. It could I go guess the it other could way, theoretically make it that it's not angry. so important. Yes. To, uh, um, but but I'm, I'm trying to, I mean, the Georgia runoff last time, right? right. One, this was so important. Yes. And then Trump very much distracted the Republican base from paying any attention to it, and Democrats got both those seats. Yeah, look, I'm of two minds. One, Warnock has demonstrated his ability to run a successful runoff campaign, yeah. and there's definitely the infrastructure in the state to hold him down. Moreover, as we talked about with the guest in an earlier segment, turnout is high, unprecedentedly high, 20% higher than it was in 2018, and historically that does nurture to the benefit of Democrats. So, you know, I can't imagine a world where because Democrats have already lost and because they've been so disappoint uh, disappointed by you know, Biden's failure to follow through and all of the, the Maybe treats Stacey he had Abrams dangled. Maybe is no longer on the ballot. <laughs> <You think, laughs> Warnock will do better. Abrams is depressing the ballot sure for enough. Raphael Warnock. Look, I think if you're going to come out for Warnock, you're going to come out for Warnock yeah. and you might not vote yeah. for Abrams at the same time. I'm not sure that she has a su suppressant either. effect. Um, <laughs> <laughs> however, I do think that... The, I don't know. I'm inclined to think that the infrastructure that is in Georgia isn't going to just say, oh, well, if there is a runoff. And in fact, having that uh, focus and attention on the state will, again, inert to the benefit of Democrats there. So I'm going to I'm going to say Georgia's blue, not the governor's race, uh, yeah. but for the Senate yeah. race. And it's very it's going to be interesting. We're going to but we're not going to know everything. Right? Pennsylvania, we're not actually going to know right a night of. Right. Because this, these are going to be results trickling in for forever and et cetera, et cetera. Also, so you, you never know if these are also going to be contested or not. <laughs> <laughs> these never days. Know if be, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't even put that into the ether. Yeah, how dare you? I'm sorry. Democracy is not at stake. Well, I'm going to, so if my predictions are wrong, I'm going to delete those tweets. I'm going to have this video <laughs> taken down and then we'll never know it. And if they're right, I'm going to go, aha. All right. So you hear this audience, screen grab it now yeah, to rub it, it in now. Navi's face. This will be gone. This will be disappeared. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. I'm kidding, of course. Uh, don't forget our parent company, Nexstar, will have live election coverage of the 2022 midterms. November 8th, News Nation will be broadcasting live starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They're partnering with Decision Desk HQ to call the big races, and they'll also have journalists from across the country, including right here at the Hill. And, of course, we will have post-election coverage for you as well right here on Rising. Have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow.